I'd like to share a few of the tips and techniques that I've learned through the years using Star Logo. Things that I haven't seen covered in other places like the skill cards or online tutorials. So the screen that I'm on, by the way, you can always get to by clicking my profile in the top right hand corner. To start a new project, I'm going to create a new project. And I'll start with a first person action game because I don't want to take the time to build an entire game right now. I want to show you how you can enhance a game that you might have in mind. So I'll choose first person action game, click submit. And I always start by giving a title to my project. So I will call it Star Logo Nova Tips and Tricks. Let's call it Advanced. Yeah, that makes it sound way better. So I'll say click. Oops. You might have noticed that the backspace key doesn't work right now in this area, which is a bit of a drag, but that's going to be fixed in the next update. So for now, to delete text, since I can't click delete or backspace, I'm going to select all my text and then type to delete what's there. So I will say click, <laughs> I have to do it again, <laughs> click the setup button, then play then the play button to test the game. So giving instructions, of course, for people that may be new to StarLogo and not realize they have to click buttons to do things. So right now, if I click Run Code, Set Up, and Play, it's just the basic starter game. I'm using the arrow keys left and right to move left and right up arrow and down arrow to move forward and backward and any time that I collide with one of these little pyramid guys it eats it. Now this is slower than most games that I'm used to so I want to make sure everyone knows about the speed slider here. So if I use this speed slider I'm going to drag it all the way down then it speeds up my game quite a bit. Now that's really important for games that involve collision because another way that people would typically speed up the movement of their game is where the play toggled is for turtle and for other characters you move forward maybe you want to move forward 10 instead of one but if you move forward 10 spots it's sort of the equivalent of leaping over something that might be there so if I say move forward 10 and backward 10 I'm going to slow this back down so we can really see this. So I'll drag that slider. I'm going to run code, set up, play. Now they move slow, I'll move fast, but notice sometimes I'm it's like I'm moving right through those things. The collision isn't working all the time. That's because I'm moving 10 spots at a time, so it's really like teleporting forward 10 spots. Collision doesn't m work in between. So that collision, it'll work if they touch me because they're going less than one spot at a time. But when I move, sometimes, see I'm moving right through them sometimes. So to speed up your game, it's better to use the slider and keep your movement restricted to only moving forward one or two spaces at a time. So I'm going to keep that at one. And I have the other characters forward 0.5. If the other characters move as fast or faster than me, it'll become almost impossible to get them. Really tricky, because I just can't catch up. But so far, I haven't actually shown you anything that you couldn't have learned on your own, if you know about that speed slider. What's something else? Well, have any of you figured out how to change the color of the sky? Anybody? There is no block that lets you change the color of the sky. If you want to change the color of your um, your agents here, you can chain, you can use your set my color to random color, but there is no block for the sky. So how do we change? I see a ton of games right now with black skies and very few with anything else. 
Well, because there's no block that lets me change the background color or the sky color, what if instead I created a giant sphere and put my entire game inside that sphere? Do you know that you can put your camera inside objects the same way that right now we have our camera outside? I'll show you how to do that. Everybody should know how to create a sphere, but I'll go through it for you. Create one other character and let's let's create a sky breed so I'll click on edit breeds create I'll add a breed and I'll call it sky click OK and now I should see a tab for sky which I do and in my create I can choose sky create one sky and I want to set the shape to sphere instead of looking for the blocks why don't I click and drag over the set my shape and the built-in shape blocks see how they're highlighted now then I can copy and paste and put that block inside the create one sky do so create one sky do set my shape to not pyramid but sphere and then I want to set my color so let's do the same thing, let's copy this set my color, copy, paste, put it under the set my shape block. I wanna set my color, let's make a blue sky because I'm feeling really boring today. So I'll do sky blue. What could be better for a sky color than sky blue? I have a dear friend named sky blue. He'd be so happy to know that I'm naming the entire sky after him. So we have one sky setting the shape to sphere and the color to sky blue. Let's See what happens when I click Run Code, Setup, and Play. Um, I don't see anything, do you? What if I move? Oh, look! A blue ball! I didn't change the location, so it's being created in the center, exactly where my little player cube is. Clearly, we need that to be bigger if we're going to have our whole game world go inside it. So you probably have also learned how to make objects larger, right? So I want to go to traits yet again. I'm going to drag set my size. And I can just type in the size that I want. Now most people think of your entire world as being the size of about 100. So if I set my size to 100, that should be the size of the terrain approximately. Let's test it. Run code, set up. Wait a minute. If I do play now, it did make a huge cube. And if I go inside it, I do eventually see something weird. But it's like the sky is resting on the earth. That's not quite right. How would we fix that? Right now everything's moving in the X and Y plane, in the horizontal plane, but don't we have a third direction we can move in? I mean, isn't this 3D after all? If I go to movement, ah uh, yes, up and down. When we set up the sky, shouldn't we move it down? But how far down should it go? If the sky is 100 and the size of the terrain is 100, then shouldn't I go down half of that, 50, so that it's intersecting? Let's test it. Run code, set up, nice, play. What do I have? A blue sky. Now let's test it out. I'm going to move forward. What happens when I get to the edge? Oh no! Oh, this is just like that TV show Under the Dome. What I've done is created a blue dome, and things are going in and out of the dome. I don't like that. So what we want to do is, I think it needs to be bigger than 100. Let's try 250. Run code. Set up. Nice. Now I can go all the way to the edge, and I should bounce back. 
Now, unfortunately, notice when I get to the edge and I, I automatically turn around, now I'm seeing the edge of that terrain. So we do have a sky. I've sh done what I said. You can change the sky color. But I don't like how you get to the end of the terrain like that. Couldn't we use a similar trick to make the terrain endless so that the terrain goes on and on so we don't have that weird blick blick like you're on the edge of the world, the world is flat? I bet we could. Now I can't create an additional terrain and I can't technically set the terrain to a bigger size. There is no terrain object. But what if I use that same technique I'm going to copy all that code that we made for Sky, copy, paste, throw that down here, and let's create a new breed and call you Ground. I don't want to confuse it with Terrain because Terrain has specific things, Ground is just what you see. So for the purposes of this little demonstration, ground works for me. I don't want the shape to be sphere. Let's set the shape to cube. And let's set the color to green. Let's keep the size at 250. But I probably want to go down more than 50. I don't want to be now in the middle of a cube the way that I'm in the middle of the sphere. So I could go down 100, down 100 should be near the top, but that means it would be beneath the terrain. Or would it? Let's test our code. Run code, setup. Now I have to click play and go to the edge of the world. So far so good. Go to the edge, get turned around. Wait, it's not working. Something's weird. Let's go back. We set the size to 250, cube, green, down 100. Maybe that was too far. What if we go down 90? Run code, set up, play. Now because I'm seeing a corner, I think that still isn't enough. So I'm thinking maybe it should go 500 and only go down 10. Let's try that. Kind of in random mode right now. I'm just trying out some stuff. Set up, play. No, that didn't work. Or did it? Look, now I can see there's another layer down there. Maybe changing the scale is doing something about where it goes. So instead of down 10, what if I try down 0? Maybe a cube is drawn from the top and a sphere is drawn from the bottom. I don't know. All I know is it didn't work, so I'm going to try a new value. Ah, oh, check it out. Now, now that flickering thing is because technically the top of the cube and the top of the terrain are in exactly the same place. Star Logo doesn't like it, although when I get to the edge, I think I'm getting the effect that I want. Clicking play again to stop. And also the color is a little bit different. So it might be more of like a lime green or something. But maybe if I don't really want to see the terrain, Let's make it all continuous. So let's go up one or down negative one. I'm feeling lazy. So that way I don't have to grab another one. Run code, set up. Oh no. It's up one, but that's a little bit too high. So let's try less than um, we want to go down negative point one. Let's see if that makes a difference. Run code, set up, play. Nice.